Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we have got a very special video. I have gotten the opportunity to interview Tokyo Machine. Uh, and I will say it is not an in-person interview because Tokyo Machine is currently touring, and uh, so this is just an in-text interview. But I got the opportunity and the chance to uh, talk to Tokyo Machine a little bit about specifically Chompo and what the heck this is. Is this thing a label? Is it a battle pass? Is it just a whatever? Is it a Tokimon? What the heck is this? And so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. I think this will be fun. We'll just kind of I'll read out the things that I say, the questions, and then we'll read his responses and kind of talk about it a little bit. So this is a informal, not fully, but text interview with Tokyo Machine. So along those lines, the first question I asked was, so what exactly is Chompo? Is it a label, a battle pass, just music for video games? What even is it? And Tokyo replied, uh, Chompo is a new way to release music that combines what I love about the music and gaming industry. I felt that there was a better way to make the two mediums feel cohesive. I have learned a lot by working with amazing partners like Konami, Rec Room, Rocket League, Beat Saber, and more, and wanted to experiment with how gaming and music could work together to create unique worlds, experiences, and moments. Uh, Chompo releases songs and albums from myself and other artists like a label. Chompo has seasons, battle passes, and challenges like a video game. Chompo has songs that can be added to video games like a music publisher. Chompo will digitally join my tours like a virtual pet. I don't think Chompo is a dinosaur that you can label. It is a brand that, thanks to my insane fans, has no limits. And that is incredible. I, I love that response. It is <laughs> super fun just to know that I love this, that sentiment at the end, that Chompo has no limits, really. It is everything at once. In hindsight, like, so obvious. Like, yes, that makes sense. Why can't we have something that is all of these things at once? Why can't, Why does a label just have to be a label? Why does making music for games just have to be music made for games? Why does a, uh, like what he said, a battle pass just have to be a battle pass? Just put it in all in one brilliant. I think it's great. On the flip side of that though, I think being a kind of Swiss army knife of everything like Chompo is does make it a little confusing on first kind of, I don't know, experience with it because you see, oh, Chompo, you see it on Spotify, you're like, oh, is it an artist? Okay, no, it's just a, oh, a label. Okay, well, this is Battle Pass. Oh, well, now the challenges. And so I think it's a little confusing at first, but once you sort of get the grasp on what it is and what it's trying to accomplish, I think it's phenomenal. Next, I asked, what was the primary inspiration for the Battle Pass aspect of Chompo? And Tokyo replied, uh, I play a lot of free-to-play games like Rocket League and Fortnite. I love how fans of all budgets and backgrounds can play and participate in the game through seasons. It also makes the game feel like an ongoing event and community which, again, I think is great. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, someone particularly like myself who does do a lot of these battle passes. I played a ton of Fortnite back in the day. Um, League has its own battle passes. And um, there's just, yeah, I, I love that the sentiment of it because some things I really do like more so than others. And so sometimes I'll just get the free version of a battle pass on something like League. And back in the days, I would buy the Fortnite battle pass because I liked what was in it and try to grind and get all these things. And so uh, having this kind of challenge, multi-tiered level component of it, I think is great uh, and really does speak to what he says of, of people with all kind of monetary backgrounds. And you can get a ton of stuff just for free for giving an email. And uh, you can also get a lot more if you uh, have the ability to um, be a little bit more, <laughs> I don't know, generous with your money. I think that's maybe the best way to put it, but uh, great, great response. Next up, I asked about the Tokimons because, well, Tokimon Machine has these sort of Pokemon pets of sorts and aptly named Tokimon. And I asked, uh, why use Chompo as the mascot? And Tokyo replied with, uh, Chompo is the only 2D Tokimon. Uh, he lived inside a retro 8-bit video game and got teleported into the 3D real world. Uh, Nintendo's Mr. Game & Watch was a big inspiration for Chompo's design. Uh, Chompo's video game uh, backstory fits the culture and sound I was going for with the project. And uh, I, I, I like that a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm not familiar with all of the Tokimon in the Tokiverse of whatever of <laughs> what he's got going on. Uh, but looking at all of them at face value, for sure, this one looks like it fits what he was going for more so than anything else. So this was a potentially meaty question and one that I think some of you are maybe looking for an answer to. Uh, what's the thought process around going independent with Champo? Why not partner with an already established label like Monster Cat for this? And he replied with, uh, large labels can be wonderful to work with, but it is a very different creative and release process compared to working independently. I wanted to keep the Chompo project independent to allow for the artists and fans to have an alternative experience to a traditional label. Most artists already have a main label they work with. Chompo is something new that the artists can work with when they want a 
different type of creative outlet. I think this is a great response because this really highlights all the things that I thought it would, where um, as much as you love the big brand and the big kind of energy and, and kind of commercial uh, like success the big labels have, um, doing something independently is you have way more creative freedom in every aspect to it. And they're so complementary of one another. Um, they're not fighting for each other, not fighting for this kind of same space, not fighting for your either listens. They're very complementary of each other. And that makes sense with especially a lot of the artists on both Monster Cat and Champo being a lot of overlap there. So uh, I love this. I love the overlap. I love how um, one can complement another and how they can both work in a beautiful tandem. Next I asked, well, is Champo the end goal for Tokyo Machine? Will we see a release elsewhere in the future? And he replied with, uh, I will continue releasing music through a variety of places and ways, including Champo. I am super grateful that my fans will come to find my music regardless of where it is released. Uh, the album for Champo Season 1 releases on May 9th. I'll follow that with a single on Monster Cat in June. Okay. With some other surprises will be announced soon. Okay. We've got some more surprises coming down the line. A June Monster Cat release. That's exciting. Uh, and then what we've seen before, the May 9th release of Season 1 of Champo. So uh, that's excited for some stuff to look Look forward to for sure. Next up I had to ask, so video games have clearly had an impact on your life up to this point. What single game has had the biggest impact on your music? And uh, he said, well, there are just too many to pick, uh, just one. Uh, Outrun, Mario Kart, Jazz, Jackrabbit 2, which I've never even heard of, Tekken, Jet Set Radio, and Final Fantasy are some of the all-timers for me. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. You can hear a lot of the influence in some of these games in Tokyo's production and kind of style of what he's going for and his kind of whole branding and persona. Uh, you can definitely see a lot of that with uh, just a few examples of the games here. On similar vein, I asked if you had to make an OST or an original soundtrack to anything Thing. It could be a video game, a movie, anime, what would it be? And he replied, uh, I worked with Konami to reimagine the soundtrack and music to one of my favorite retro games, Gradius, I believe it's called. Uh, the song was then added to some of Konami's arcade dancing games. Uh, watching people dance in arcades to my music has been both hilarious and heartwarming. heartwarming. That has got to be great. I would love that. Just the idea of seeing a working so hard and, and having like a, I don't know if it's a childhood game for him, but just something that you've loved so much over the past years and years and years and then being a part of it in one way or another and then seeing people just either fail or have tons of fun with your music and what you've created with something that you've also loved in the past um, feels like um, I'm sure a dream come true and so uh, I'm, I'm glad that Tokyo got to live that out. So with Champo being a Swiss army knife of sorts, I had to ask, what sort of media has Champo already been in? Uh, and he said, uh, I did an all unreleased Champo ID set when I, when I headlined a live show in the video game Rec Room. Uh, fans who attended could buy and wear digital Toki masks. Uh, the music slapped while everyone looked adorable. Champo has virtually brought, was virtually brought to life in game two. He loves a good party. I love that. I, I love that Champo is just this kind of sort of, sort of multimedia, like pure, the quintessential multimedia thing. <laughs> it's just, it, it is a multimedia and I uh, love seeing how far Champo will go and has gone so far. And I had to ask, because if Champo can be anything, well, will Champo be a video game itself? And uh, Tokyo replied with, Champo can be whatever his 8-bit prehistoric heart desires. And uh, I don't know if that's a teaser. I don't know if that's i uh, I'm not gonna say anything. And so I can't say anything now, but uh, that was his response. So take that as you will. Next up, I asked which artist would be on your top of your kind of wish list for joining the Champo family in the future. And Tokyo said, uh, Champo is a great way for me to introduce Japanese acts to the Western EDM aud audiences. Bringing the world together through music is important to both myself and my team. Landing, uh, see, I don't know how to say this yet. Mimi, Mimi Adufu, I want to say, for Champo season one was crazy. I'm working hard to bring even more acts like that to Champo. Okay, some more kind of Eastern influence to the Western primarily world of, I guess, EDM dance. And so, uh, that's exciting. Again, I hope I didn't butcher that name. Uh, I'm excited for that track to come down the line as well, too. And so um, I'm excited to hear more of that, more of that kind of uh, influence, too, on the, um, I would say, predominantly Western side of, of what EDM is. And so uh, Tokyo very clearly has an affinity for that kind of culture of the world, that side of the world's culture. And so uh, I'm excited to hear more of that music, too. And it's, it's very evident in what he's already done. And the last thing I had to ask, I had to do it. What can we expect from the future of Trompo? Any little tidbits of what's coming? And he just said a simple season two.
So that has been my interview with Tokyo Machine, the sort of text to speech, text to text, and then text to speech, to you, to video, to listening, to uh, what is everything, um, a little interview with Tokyo Machine. So I, I hope you liked it. I hope these answers were a uh, little fun and uh, we get to hear a little bit teasers of sort of maybe what is coming down the line in the future. So that's exciting. I hope you enjoyed it. And other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.